Hello everyone. As part of the Heritage for All Internship Program 2021, this lecture talks about the ethnic Santal communities, their traditional agroforestry practices and the issues they face today. It is very important to know about the history of Santals in the Indian subcontinent. The exact dating of the evolutionary history of the Santals is ambivalent. Linguists suggest about 3600 to 4000 years ago, Austroasiatic speakers moved from Indochina to Odisha of Eastern India and later got mixed with the ancient Indian population. Today, their successors, the Santali community, are spread across major parts of India, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Bhutan. During the period of colonization of the Indian subcontinent, their agricultural knowledge and prowess made them an invincible part of the Deedan society. Santa livelihood of Santali community and agriculture. They have adapted their livelihood patterns according to the seasonal changes and agricultural cycles of the nature. Their primary livelihood activities are hunting, gathering, and collecting food and animals from forests. Today, due to their dependence on sal, otherwise known as Shoria robusta, and moho trees, otherwise known as Madhuka longifolia, these trees have emerged as their symbolic representation. Santali culture is deeply associated with the natural environment surrounding them. Santals have strong beliefs in supernatural deities, natural spirits, and natural forces. The timing of many festivals is closely associated with the agricultural cycle. Eroxim is celebrated before the sowing of seeds in the fields. Hariyarstim is performed during the sprouting of seedlings. Again, Jantar is performed to offer gratitude during the cut of the first rice product. Sohara is the biggest harvest festival of all. The Santali Spring Festival is known as Baha Festival, where Baha means flower. Forests with all their life forms have become an integral part of Santali songs and dances. Songs portray the interconnection between that community's happiness and well-being of the forest. <laughs> Specific dance patterns have arisen as a result of their age-old traditions. Their traditional musical instruments have deep spiritual meanings associated with them. They are made of sal oods, bamboo oods, soft oods, and again, some are also made of lizard skin and metal shells. Their artistic perception is deeply associated with the cultural traditions and the physical environment around them. Drawn with primary colors, the artworks portray simplicity rather than realistic perception of birds, animals, insects, and humans. Scenic view of the villages, women collecting firewood and water, the family engaged in agricultural activities, Santalis returning from hunting festival with hunted animals, fishing, flying kites, marriage rites of carrying the bride by the bridegroom, etc. are significantly shown in the artworks which portray strong communal and family bond among the community members. Santals live in separate hamlets close to the forest with 400 to 1000 members in each hamlet. Houses are made of mud as well as materials collected from the forest and their communities are surrounded by trees or clumps of bamboo bushes. Generally, cattle shed, pig shed, manure pit, kitchen garden, courtyard spaces, and a sacred um, space named Bhitar, regarded as the abode of the ancestral deities, are very important parts of the Santa Library household. Generally, the houses have no windows and the roof is structured with bamboo, thatched with straw, and the rafters are made of sal wood. They have crafted different indigenous techniques to ensure the sustainability of their settlements. But the most noteworthy characteristic observed in the homes of the Santals is the exquisite artworks and paintings that decorate the exterior of the houses. The architectural patterns and different motifs adorning the walls of the houses and symbolizes the Santal community neighborhood. Santals have always preferred a simple life dependent on forests and agricultural lands, and they have always been taken advantage of due to their vulnerable condition. 
During the colonization of the Indian subcontinent, Santal Hul or Santal Revolution was one of the movements by the Santal community against the exploitation, distorted revenue system and usury practices enforced by upper caste landlords, moneylenders, traders and colonial rulers of British East India Company in the Bengal Presidency area, which was the subdivision of the British Empire. Though the rebellion was subdued at the time, it is one of the movements that led to future rebellion, rebellions led by many revolutionaries, which resulted in the demise of colonization of the Indian subcontinent. Today, the day is remembered by the Santals all over Bangladesh and Indian states with utmost respect and devotion. The spirits of the struggles are still kept alive through folklore and songs. But today, Santal community in Bangladesh are still facing land grabbing issues through illicit means. After the end of colonial rule and the emergence of nation states in 1947, many Santals were deprived of their land rights due to the absence of legal deeds through uh, brutal attacks and grabbing and many forms of legal trickery. United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples of you, which is also known as UN TRIP, is one of the noteworthy achievements of the member states of the United Nations that recognizes the rights of indigenous communities all over the world. Unfortunately, Bangladesh is one of the countries that has abstained itself from ratifying it, and still the state prefers to use the term ethnic minority instead of indigenous population. Though the state has taken some steps to protect and safeguard the traditional land rights of the community, implementation of those policies have proven to be a huge challenge. These references have been used to conduct this study. And now we have come to the end of the lecture. I'd like to thank you for your kind attention.